everybody. Welcome inside the Rockwall Sports Center Yellow Jacket Update. I'm Chris Curtis here, joined by Billy Quinton. Billy, we've kind of upgraded our set just a little bit. We're kind of moving up in the realms of life here. So different. It's like we're part of Action News. I know. But, yeah. Uh, we'll bring you all the updates, everything you need. We'll have weather in about five minutes. <laughs> maybe, maybe not on that. But thanks again for Rockwall High School for hosting us here for the Rockwall Sports Center Yellow Jacket Update. Unfortunately, we have some bad news to talk about. For the first time since November 8th of 2013, the Yellow Jackets lost a regular season game. They followed Denton Ryan this past Friday night, 31-17. to And, Billy, what went wrong on Friday night? 31-14. 31-14. Yes. I gave them an extra field goal. Yeah, that's that they all right. Made. Yeah, we, should, we, needed that. <laughs> we needed those points. Uh, well, uh, you know, we're talking about things that went wrong. I believe uh, the offensive line struggled a little bit. Uh, they made mistakes at the uh, most crucial times. Obviously, you don't want to make mistake, mistakes, but definitely not after you've had a big play. They would always have a big play, but it would be nullified by a penalty, a turnover, loss of yardage, something like that. And I think a lot of it was just inexperience with a lot of players. First varsity game for them, or at least starting. Uh, you have some inexperience on the offensive line, as I mentioned, but uh, there were a lot, of, a lot of positives also. It seems like this was going to be one of those games, as much as Rockwell didn't play that great, they were hanging in at halftime. It was mm -hmm. only 10-0. They were feeling good. Coming out of halftime, they scored a touchdown right off the bat. Uh, Will to Sam Crawford, which he's going to be a stud down the road mm -hmm. uh, come here. But... They were in this game 10-7 uh, going into the middle of the third quarter, and then things just kind of fell apart by a young quarterback from Denton Ryan who yeah. kind of torched the Rockwell defense after a while. You're right. They hung in there. The defense played well throughout the game, I felt. And it's kind of weird saying that when you see that Ryan scored uh, 31 points eventually. But it was 10-7 in the third quarter, and Rockwell had their opportunities. They, the, the Spen uh, Spencer Sanders, the quarterback for Ryan, was outstanding. We saw him as a freshman in 2014. And he struggled a little bit in that game. And Rockwall won that game. But that uh, year under his belt made a huge difference. This kid could throw. He could pass. He made the right decisions. Very elusive. He's going to probably be playing on Saturdays once his high school career is over. And it was hard for Rockwall to contain him. There were many moments that they had opportunities to, to bring him down. And on third down, he would make plays and get the first down and continue drives. The that one positive for Rockwall was the defense, though. Luke Terman, Tobias, uh, Corey Barron uh, did well on the off, uh, defensive line. The secondary did well. They were in good coverage. They had one tough pass interference penalty that I thought was not, you know, a good call, but it hurt Rockwall. It was in the end zone there. But uh, uh, all in all, I thought the de defense played well. The offense did struggle some. The running game never got unhitched until late. Caleb Broach did well, uh, just under 100 yards, rushed for 99 yards. And, of course, you just mentioned Will Reed uh, to Sam Crawford. Sam had 120 yards receiving. Another bright note was uh, Cole Talley, his first game. And the slot uh, had a couple big catches. And, of course, this will be the first time we hear from head coach uh, Rodney Webb on the uh, game against Denton Ryan. Let's hear from him right now. You know, we talk to our kids about in non-district, uh, we talk about getting better. And uh, we play a very, very difficult non-district schedule. And uh, Denton Ryan's got multiple state championship trophies in their trophy case right now. And they're a very proud program. And uh, we knew they were going to be very difficult uh, uh, as they were last year. Um, and... Uh, so we can't control the quality of our opponent. We just control us, and, and we want to be the best version of us we can be. And uh, we improved from the scrimmage. Uh, we've got some kids that are starting to get valuable experience under their belt. Uh, we've got a lot more improvement to make, but um, you know, we're, it gave, that game gave us a really good chance to evaluate where we are right now. And things don't get any easier for the Rockwell Yellow Jackets this Friday night. They will travel to Euless Trinity, who, by the way, Oh, by the way, they beat the number one team in the nation, not the state of Texas, but the nation, De La Salle, this past Saturday. So let's talk about Euless Trinity here. It's not going to get any easier for them, is it? Pretty cool to have a bounce back game against uh, <laughs> Euless Trinity. Uh, and this non-district ske schedule is brutal. It's, uh, of course, we have Ryan we just lost to. We have Euless Trinity, Mesquite Horn. Right after that, we play the New England Patriots, and then we play those prisoners from the longest yard. So it's a very difficult non-district schedule. But, yeah, Euless Trinity on the horizon, uh, they beat a team that they just made a movie about uh, that had won 104 straight games, not up to this one, but just recently. But uh, Rockwell's got their work cut out for them. Trinity is extremely impressive. If you did watch them on Saturday, it was, the game was on ESPN, you just were in awe of this talent on this team. They got solid running game with Wilson, the uh, quarterback. Nate is basically a defensive tackle playing quarterback. He's hard to bring down. And then they have a very strong and quick defense, as they always have. So Rockwell's got their work cut out for them. But I think that, uh, as Coach Webb has said before, and many coaches say, the biggest improvement for teams is from game one to game two. And I think it's going to be exciting to see how much Rockwall improves, what they've worked on, and uh, what they bring when we go to Pennington Field to play Trinity. They always say Texas football is the best in the land. Obviously, that's easy. 
That's true. Let's hear yeah. from Coach Rodney Webb on this week's tough challenge against Euless Trinity. Um, our kids are not going to back down from anyone. We're going to step on the field and we're going to expect to win uh, against whoever we're playing. And uh, so we are. Uh, excited about the opportunity. It's a non-district game. It's a chance to get better. I told our kids this morning, I said, you know, we have a chance to beat the team that beat the number one team in the nation on Saturday night. And, and so it's a great opportunity. And I know this much, uh, at the end of that game on Friday night, Trinity's going to have made us better. Win, lose, or draw, we're going to be better for the experience. Of course, the student swarm was absolutely ridiculous yeah. this past Friday. Yeah. They really brought it. They're going to need to bring it once again on Friday in that tough environment. Don't forget, it's www.rockwellisd.com to listen to Billy and his crew break down another Friday night game, which hopefully Rockwell will get back on the mend and maybe cause an upset, which will throw things all into chaos here oh, in the sure. state of We Texas. may shut them out. You never, you never know. know. It could yeah. happen. Hey, Heath played them really well last year. He lost they by seven, so now it's Rockwell's turn against Euless Trinity. We'll see you next Monday for the Rockwall Sports Center Yellow Jacket Update. For Blake Quinn, I'm Chris Curtis. We'll see you then. Hey, hey.